Welcome to the call. So again, for the folks who are just joining, a reminder of the meeting is recorded and automatically posted to YouTube. We usually start about five after when folks have turned up. I've linked into the chat again so folks can go add themselves to the attendee page on the meeting minutes or add anything to the agenda they'd like to. Great. So, Nikolai, you want to get going? I'll sh um, do we have Nikolai on the call? Um, yep, I will. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to share the... Um, yes. Yes. Cool. I will once again stick the link in here for folks who want to add themselves to the attendee list and or add agenda items. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So I guess my, scene, my screen is uh, shared and should be seen by everyone. Yep. Good. Um, okay. So, yes, again, please add your names here if you didn't do so already. Um, so, uh, agenda bashing, I guess that we have added a couple of items already. If there's anything that you want to bring up uh, to our attention now, now is the time, or you can just add it on the bottom. Uh, doesn't uh, Doesn't change much. Um, okay, so uh, the first uh, thing here to discuss is uh, the events. So we have a couple of them queued here. Uh, Mobile World Congress is the first one on the list, although not the first one. Ah, yeah, actually, it's yes, it's it's later this month. So uh, there will be a number of people going uh, there. Um, I guess, uh, yeah. If uh, possible, maybe maybe we can we can do some some meeting there. I will, won't be present, but if there are relevant people, could be good to to join and talk about NSM. Um, so f on the networks on the service mesh day. Okay, we still don't have network service mesh day, but on service mesh day. Uh, Fred uh, was supposed to submit a talk, and I see that he's here already. So, Fred, did you submit your talk?
Nope. Ah, they they actually updated the date, so first of March. So yeah, there's still still time. So if someone is interested, it's in San Francisco. So if someone is there and wants to join, could be interesting to to participate there from NSM point of view. Um, then we have the Open Networking Summit in North America. Uh, call for paper already closed. Um, did uh, someone uh, receive any notifications? Uh, Ed, I, are you aware of something? I think the notification dates have been pushed back. I've got some talks in there and I have not received notification one way or the other. Okay. Um, yeah. In the background, I'll try and see if I can figure out when the new notification date is. Yeah, because they say that the schedule announcement should have been like last Friday, uh, Thursday, February 7th. But it's, yeah. Good. Uh, LFN demo boot to showcase audio and SEM integration. Okay. Uh, is this a Lumina LFN? Uh, who is who is doing the demo there? Is uh, there anyone? Usually, that's probably Prem, who's at Lumina, but he doesn't happen to be on the call today. Ah, uh, okay, okay. So that would be a great, uh, interesting demo actually to watch and to demo. And uh, if the relevant guys are interested, they can even show something on this call for the rest of us to see before the ONS. But I guess we still have time. Uh, the okay, what was this? This is the uh, MPOS SDN uh, NFV um, meetup uh, or I don't know kind of conference there in Paris. Uh, I don't know why it's here. I think that that some folks are attending to uh, are yeah are in, intending to to attend there. Um, uh, maybe more relevant for us is the container world. Yeah, okay, we also have a talk accepted there. And uh, we would like to see more details from Prem, but I don't know, is he on the call? I don't think we have Prem this week. Mm, no, okay, yeah. Maybe it would be interesting to to see what what was accepted there. And uh, the big event for NSM, at least uh, to my view, would be KubeCon EU Barcelona, where we target to announce our first release. I hope that uh, we'll be able to to do a good uh, good impression there. And um, yeah, the, actually, in three weeks we should receive the notifications, but we have supplied a number of talks. So submitted a number of talks, so I guess that we should we should make it with with something meaningful there. Uh, so, Ed, do you have uh, anything to add about the FDIO mini summit? Um, so that, that that's something we should be sorting out sorting out in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't have anything to add directly, but it's it's very likely there will be an FDIO mini summit um, happening. Mm -hmm. And call for papers is still to be done. Yes, indeed. Okay. So yeah, we'll follow here, I guess, in the next calls and see how how this goes. Uh, for the Shanghai, uh, for the KubeCon and Cloud Native Con in Shanghai, it's the call for papers are still open. From what it says here, February fifteenth. So if someone is uh, is attending there, please note us that we can record here the, the fact of the event, or the, at least the application. Uh, and the last thing here on the list uh, from the events that we have is the Open Network Summit, which is um, which will be in September, and Call for Papers is still not opening. It's still not open, but we are yeah, intending to, to, to apply there for sure. Uh, OK. So uh, the next thing that we have here on the list is the, the announcement. Uh, is there anyone wanting to announce something that's not on the event list or not on the agenda? Something interesting that we... Uh, 
so maybe maybe I can I can share something. So we 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 were contacted with that uh, by a guy that uh, apparently is in a time zone which is not really suitable to attend the work group call. But we hope that he will be able to attend next time and share uh, how to say multi cluster uh, NSM uh, with interesting approach. Um, we'll see. I mean, interesting to see that that some. Someone is working on this in an alternative way while we get uh, even the same stuff. It's always a good idea. This, this space is very new, and so there are lots of interesting experiments going on, and it's always exciting to see them. This is how we learn. Yeah. Okay, so let's hope that next time we're going to see something, uh, even a demo or slides or, yeah. Okay. Um, the next thing that we have on the list is the stars announcement. So we did this last time. So we need to gather, um, I think it was 300 stars. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, we are, we were about 80 today. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's it now, but, uh, yeah, this is something that, uh, please spread the word, ask, ask your friends and, you know, allies on the project to star. <laughs> we need the stars. Um, yeah, and then I, there are a couple of items which are marked for me, which means that, okay, so the first one is uh, the NSM re re release project. So uh, as we announced, I think a couple of work group calls back, we started this uh, um, this release process and we are going to track it here on this project. Um, we have a couple of items here in the backlog and a couple of them in the progress uh, already. So, um, yeah, everyone can, can check this, but, um, maybe one thing that, that, uh, that is okay. Maybe two things, which was, which are worth noting. One is the auto healing that is going on in, um, at least, uh, two directions. Uh, I mean, I mean, two people working on it, uh, in different, uh, PPRs and the other thing is that uh, we in different scenarios and by improving our CI uh, we are uh, identifying um, unstable behavior and we are trying to Im improve this and this actually is, is good because you know we're having a lot more um, use and test cases uh, where which which will allow us to, to 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 improve our stability and robustness of the overall solution um so that's that's the current uh, state of course there will be a lot more to add uh, it's just that this is what's going on today and i hope that uh, the specs which are due to be reviewed um, in this meeting also by it uh, we will have a chance to also <coughs> uh, generate uh, more also other interesting uh, topics that that will need to be that will actually make their way here in the in the backlog um okay uh then uh yeah last time we announced the spec about the nsm release process uh and we asked uh, for any review suggestions and um, you know any kind of help uh, i don't know the the because we didn't receive anything, at least in the in the yeah, remarks I, here. Yeah, I, I think that we sort of come to the conclusion there were basically there were there was a small number of things that absolutely needed to be decided fairly swiftly, um, and th these are sort of the things we need to agree on. Um, one of them was um, the the dates, right? Uh, what date are we going to pull the throttle branch um, for the release, and at what date are we going to actually? Um, you know, put out the dot zero version, um, which is sort of the release candidate for us. And then on what date are we going to put out the dot one, which is the first, okay, we actually think this is a workable release. Um, and you had proposed some dates that we had talked about last week and they looked really good to me. And I didn't hear anyone else to whom they didn't look good, but I wanted to allow, I thought it was important that we have a little bit of time for there to be some discussion and consideration. And so we, I think we had decided last week that we would sort of take a look at those dates this week and see how people felt about them, get any discussion about their placement and, and if people are okay, we'll just proceed with those dates. Um, so do folks have any thoughts, opinions or comments? It looks like 
effectively we're pulling the throttle branch um, about a week before we would do the initial uh, dot zero release and then another week before the dot one and the dot one is timed so that we would have a working dot one release um, going into KubeCon EU. Um, with, it looks like you allowed about a week's worth of slack in the schedule for the inevitable things to go wrong, Nikolai? Uh, yeah, actually, actually there are two, two, two weeks in between the, you see, mm. it's 14. Right, right, right. Yeah. KubeCon EU is about a week after the first. Uh, yes, 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 of course, of course, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. <laughs> Inevitably, <laughs> you know, it, it, what's the expression? Man plans, God laughs. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I think it's probably wise. Do other folks have comments or thoughts? So we have I do have a question. Is there like a clear like feature list that I can go read somewhere that says definitively this is in the, the dot one release? Um, have like you ever this, this is what you, that actually works like that at this stage? <laughs> I, sorry, you were breaking up there. So, I mean, I don't think we have that right now. I think you've got some stuff, Nikolai, you've put together on the board of stuff that we're actually targeting getting into that. Part. Um, and, but, but part of it is, you know, people have to actually come and do the work. Um, and, and open source projects don't centrally, don't end up being sort of centrally managed quite like that. I mean, you can come to consensus that looks like that. But my sense was, Probably what we're looking at is uh, at this particular moment is sort of stability um, and security and that kind of stuff. Are there particular features you want to see in the dot one release? No, I just want to know what they are so I can go internally and be like, we should all take a look at this and this is what you can do with it as of this release. Uh -huh. Okay. I mean, we will definitely have such a list once the release goes out. No question. Right. Um, Definitely, um, but you're, you're sort of asking for sort of a, a prospective, right? Yeah, I mean, just in general, right? Like, I mean, you're gonna be able to set up these services in an NSE, you know, you be able to write these services or whatever, you know, the SDK that Nikolai has been working on has this availability, just, um, I mean, I guess, unless you're saying that, hey, look, this is a dev kit and here's dot one of this dev kit and it's bring your own code type of model. Yeah, I, th I think, but, to be honest, like, like, there, there's, there's the network service mesh itself, and that's, that should be something you just can queue control apply, and there you go, right? Um, and then there is the, the things you might deploy on top of the network service mesh, which would be various NSEs. And then there is, as you pointed out, the SDK, the Delta, which would be, this is how we make it super easy to write your own network service endpoints. Um, gotcha. So the SDK is always I'm just trying to avoid the awkward awkward conversations with like directors and VPs when they give me the office baseline of, so tell me exactly what you do here. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, that, that might be actually um, worth discussing in parallel is like how we would, you know, they're, 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 it's an interesting thing network service mesh in terms of explaining it to different audiences. I've done a lot of this um, and it, it's super funny because um, there's a set of things that I figured out that seem to work well with cloud native audiences, people who are used to writing apps in Kubernetes, and they sort of nod up and down and say, okay, that sounds good. And you guys have seen a lot of them because it turns out when you, for example, talk to the NFV folks like you, Jeffrey, um, the use cases I usually show the cloud native guys are not so much the ones you're interested in, but you look at them and you're like, yeah, I don't care about this use case, but I absolutely see where you're going, right? Because you're a network guy. Um, so how to communicate this effectively to different audiences and sort of putting together some of that collateral for the release, I think would also be really valuable. Yeah, so uh, here we have the list of the release materials. It, it, it's not really a feature list, uh, the way that you asked Jeffrey, but uh, still I think that based on this, you know, we, we will have uh, whatever we release. So at least my approach for, for the time being is to try to have as more tests as possible, different test scenarios, Proof stability uh, of the basic functionality, like define NSM, um, define a network service, deploy it within a single cluster, and if you know being able to 
to change it at runtime, all these you know kind of basic things that you feel like you should be able to have from a, something that claims to be stable. Now, all the other good things about uh, you know inter uh, inter uh, cluster communication, ENSMs, uh, NICs, and all the other things that we're talking about in the specs. I guess that these things probably won't make it. We we just don't have the time to do to do this. But if we do, it would be great, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, no, even if it's super limited in scope, I, I think uh, it always comes back to the documentation thing, I guess, is um, just having like um, an intro dev guide then, right? Like if it's, hey, we're going to show you how to build your own network services, then just, and there's a exactly. optional data plane implementators guide, but th there should probably be like um, like a pretty robust like document around your SDK, Nikolai, on, um, look, yeah, if yeah, you're going to yeah. come, it's, the underpinnings are stable. Is that a is that documentation or is that just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is in the docs. Yeah, we we definitely okay. we definitely have meat around docs, no question. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they're they're going to be super super important, particularly for the first release going into KubeCon, because we're going to have a bunch of people who are going to get immediately interested. They're going to want to take it off the shelf and do something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I, I missed that master bullet there. I didn't see that oh, that was part of the docs thing. Yeah. <laughs> we have the containers release, then so deploy artifacts, APIs. Yeah. Okay. I, I think um, one thing that's missing from that release materials. I mean, it's materials, it's not it's functionality. So, so fine, we're releasing binaries, but what can I do with it? Is probably more. You know, even if it's a, a targeted aims of what you look. You, I know you're saying, well, it's an open source community to do what it does, but. Um, but you've got a plan for KubeCon. If, it, if mm -hmm. either it reaches a threshold and you release it, or it doesn't reach a threshold and you dispose of the idea. So having that threshold in mind, I think, is important. Okay. Good point. Anything else? Um, okay. So shall we shall shall we let this uh, sit here for one more week and then we declare it? stable like done yeah it, it's certainly at least the dates right which are, are I, yeah. I think a lot of the rest of it will evolve and improve like you know we've got bullets of the documentation i'm sure we'll do better at that over time that sort of thing but the, the the key point in my mind is the the dates at which we're going to pull the throttle branches and do the dot zero and dot one release I, I think those are the really important things we have to agree on lots of other things can be somewhat in flux um, and getting them better pinned down is goodness, but dates are kind of a thing we all have to get on board with. Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so if there are no other comments, then let's leave it for one week and next week we are going to go over the dates at least again. Good. Um, so. Uh, the other story that we had happening this last week was this uh, po this um, doodle uh, that we did poll about the date of the dedicated okay. architecture call. Uh, Jeffrey, do you want to say a couple of words about what happened? Sure. And um, so first, just the disclaimer, it's going to be the documentation call, not the architecture call. Uh, I think um, okay. to keep... Um, to keep things on track and focused, we should just focus, like obviously we'll review architecture. So if you're just trying to figure out what any of this stuff actually does, it's probably you know a good one to call. But I feel like architecture call is a loaded term, which then implies that we're actually gonna argue about how the architecture should work on that call. And that's not the purpose of this one. That one should be relegated to like one off. Um, so a couple things though, that's like for the whole group, um, I added a few more bullets here is, um, so the recordings and meeting minutes, that makes sense. Um, so yeah, Ian and I, we've started a, um, a rough draft on a glossary. I'm pretty sure 90% of this is wrong, but that's okay. Um, I'd like to tackle this first. Um, so first off, uh, I know that um, Ed is traveling right now. Nikolai or Frederick, would either of you be available for tomorrow's call? I will. Okay, perfect. So, Nikolai, then I think tomorrow what we want to do is this is like the bottom layer of our, you know, this is the foundation of our houses. We need to get all of these terms satisfied. There's a couple of things that, you know, in some of the specs I've called out, like, you know, we've got data plane there, but depending on which, you know, spidery splice, 
slide deck you're looking at in NSMD sometimes refers to the daemon and other times it refers to the data plane, things like that. So mm -hmm. um, this is what I'd like to tackle with you tomorrow because I think you can help us correct some of the things we've gotten Perfect. wrong and fill in some of these blank ones. Perfect. And then from, from there, we'll continue to evolve. Um, I've secretly been trying to get Ed to do all my work for me by asking tons of questions in his specs and then just stealing his answers for the documentation. <laughs> I'm a sucker for that approach, you do well out. Um, I would actually suggest one of the other things that we sort of look at here is, um, for me, things will have abbreviations that we use and getting them along with the terms is also super helpful. Um, I also want to be really, 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 really clear um, that some of the, the choices of abbreviations have evolved a little bit. So like if you look at the very, very early decks, the network service manager was abbreviated NSM, which turns out to have been a terrible idea. And then the one, the decks I presented at KubeCon, I was calling it NSMD because that's what the process was named. Um, that turns out to be also less confusing, but has some confusion points. And I think Nikolai proposed abbreviating it NSM uh, GR, which I think is a better abbreviation. So don't feel bound by the, well, it's named this way in the deck. If we can come up with a better way, a clearer way of expressing things, that's awesome. Sure, and this goes back to the, um, the dot zero dot one release two, right? Is when you're definitely like going full bore releasing this out to the, the great blue yonder, um, we want a little bit of solidity around what things are. So that way when people are asking questions or coming to the community and stuff, um, it's clear for them. But mm -hmm. then, um, like I said, and then it's just as simple as if we're like this name or this acronym really sucks, then yeah, just in future releases, it's in the release notes, hey, we changed the name of this because the last one was stupid, right? <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, no, it happens, it happens. Um, one other quick, quick bit of housekeeping I did want to mention. So it, it, I, you, I noticed a link going by where you're putting together a set of sort of, of meeting minutes and agenda that can be edited much like the ones we have for this meeting. Um, that's epically awesome. I will try and get a patch into the website that points to the docs and points to those meeting minutes because I think that's helpful and important for people. Um, and then you, there was one other thing that came to mind. I think that was the big one. The, the how, do we find, how do we find things <laughs> um, like the meeting reliably? Yes. And actually, um, Nikolai, could you go back to the meeting notes real fast? Of course. So I added a couple more things. So like to that exact point, Ed, a docs repository. Um, so right now it's just a smattering of Google docs that all of us have made in our own little private like Google accounts. And some of them get linked to the Git page. Some of them don't. Um, we should probably come up with some type of actual document repository that whether it's Google Docs, whether it's just things you're uploading, but like a Google Drive folder or something where we are going to stash everything. And so that way people can well, there, get there to actually, all of it. There actually is a Google, Google Drive folder that I've been trying, not with 100% success, mind you, to put some of that stuff into. So I, I, mm -hmm. I just put the link to that in the chat. Um, and you'll see like a bunch of the collateral is there. Um, there's a subdirectory for specifications. Uh, there's a subdirectory where collateral for the NSM logo has been put um, so that folks can get that. Um, so that, that does exist there. Um, if there's anybody cool. who right access to be able to add files to that folder, please let me know. The folder permissions by default make everything that's put in that folder visible, um, but not necessarily world writable. I mean, for some things you want world writability and for some things you don't, right? Um, mm -hmm. And, and I think probably Google Docs is an awesome place to marshal documentation because it makes it super easy to collaborate on documents. But as things actually settle out, we'll probably then want to transition them to Markdown where they can go on the website or in the repo or whatever. Mm -hmm. And we just need to figure out where and how we want to put those things. Um, you know, so that, that becomes, you know, do we want it to be just a, a sub page on the network service mesh page? Do we want to have a docs.networkservicemesh.io URL? We've got a lot of options there. We just have to kind of figure out what works for us. Well, the most important thing, I think, if, it, if this is basically describing what the code does and how the code is put together and how to talk about the code, then it wants to be in the main repository. And then where we choose to publish that after it's been checked into the main repository is just a matter of effectively release or build. That strikes me as a very likely um, outcome. Um, but whatever ends up working for the community working on the docs is probably yeah. the best. No, the reason I say that is because the problem with Google Docs long term, 
I'm not saying we would go through the blog, but the problem with keeping it separate is that it gets edited by people who, again, are not reflecting the code. You, if there's a problem between the code and the docs and they're in two different places, which one's wrong? Well, it could yeah, be from, from, from my viewpoint, the, the Google Docs is a place to collaborate on trying to get the initial version of the yeah, docs exactly, right. Exactly. Uh, and it's super good at that. It's, it's actually not a great archival medium no, for no, no, project sure. documentation. It, yeah. Cool, and we don't have to solve that right now on this call. I just wanted to call it out that um, documentation is kind of scattered. This drive definitely helps. I'm, I'm not about recreating work that I don't have to. Um, and then the final bullet is, I'm just gonna throw this question out there. For like the official documentation, do we want to come up with some kind of like consistency or is it just shooter's choice as we submit documents? Um, and I put Lucid Chart there as an example. It doesn't have to be, it's, you can get a free account and you know, open up files, it's, it's kind of like Google Docs, it has a lot of the same challenges that was just called out with Google Docs because anybody can go in and mess around with it. I mean, you can deal with permissions, but then that becomes a full-time job in itself managing it. But I just, the idea of do we want like the imagery and the call flows and the you know diagrams and everything to look the same from document to document? And if so, should we all pick a tool that everybody can access and decide to work from that? Or do we just kind of, you know, each way. I think in addition to the, the point you're making about this, you know, common look and feel, which uh, is an important consideration. Um, I, I think you also want to make sure that whatever imagery we have is something that somebody can come back and edit and revise easily. So one of the things I've tried to do, for example, um, is when I draw diagrams, and I'm not suggesting this is the right way to diagram, right? It just happens to be the thing that I do. Um, I'll go and dry, draw them in Google Slides, and then I will often provide some kind of a link from a, a sort of a PNG or a GIF that I've you know, dumped from the Google Slides that points back to where the originals are. So the, the next poor guy who comes by who needs to update that diagram um, can find where the original editable version is and edit it and regenerate images. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like I said, if you're not a Photoshop master, then you can also just, um, like I said, there, there are online tools that are just like actual modeling and flow diagram tools that we could all use and you can share the permissions. And um, at some point you'll wanna lock it down, but you could like, you know, the equivalent of like an online Visio or something, right? Just so yeah. you're not trying to force some type of, you know, PowerPoint type application to do stuff that it wasn't really intended to do. And to be super clear, I don't personally have strong opinions as to what that tool should be. My, my strong opinions are about the characteristics of that tool in terms of anybody can access it free. Uh, we, can, we can provide the ability to share and get to the originals for things that are being embedded in our pages. So the next guy who edits it can easily do that. Those are characteristics of a solution, a particular choice of a solution I'm pretty agnostic about. I'm in full agreement. The only thing I care about is some consistency between the documentation. I'm, I'm willing to sign up for that. I'm, I'm not, you know, it's not something I personally value incredibly strongly, but I do recognize it's intensely valuable for most humans who are reading docs. And I value the ease of my reading humans quite a lot. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, that's all I had, Nikolai. So, um, but just so everyone knows, I forgot the very first thing you asked me to talk about was the poll. Um, so most of us wanted Thursday, but most of the key players couldn't make Thursdays. And so the next highest one was Wednesday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time. And just for those who haven't been tracking it, um, it's basically going to be document review calls. So we'll cover like high level architectural concepts, definitions, things like that with either um, Nikolai, Ed or Frederick. We're going to capture all that information and then we're going to start trying to, you know, start turning out some of that documentation that Nikolai had listed for um, the release dot one. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. It's super important work. Of course. Um, okay. So Ed, do you want me to open the spec page or you want to share it yourself? Uh, I can go ahead and share if you don't mind. Yep. Here you are. Okay. One second. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I, I, I'm not wanting to do necessarily a deep dive on any of these specs here in this call, um, unless there are people who feel strongly that there's a spec they want to dive into, in which case I think that's awesome. Uh, what I wanted to do was continue to draw attention to the kinds of things where 
the community is trying to work out specs for things um, so that we can sort of, things often end up better when there's, a, there's the possibility of conversation around them. And I, I do want to be really clear, the specs process we have is not a gating process, right? You don't have to go and file a spec and write a spec and debate a spec in order to actually make a contribution at all. That said, um, you'll oft, I'm, you will often find that, that, that the process is, is helpful in putting together a contribution. So if you feel it serves you, please do, and, and know that there's a good way to do that. There's a board where we can add the cards. We typically have been filing them as issues. They, those issues will typically link then to a Google Doc for collaboration, and then once we settle, we'll copy that into the issue so we get a record of what we think we're gonna do. Uh, the current stuff that we have right now, we've got a couple around um, docu you know, the NSC request documentation and high-level component document that Frederick put in that don't have associated issues yet. I think that's going to roll into some of the documentation things. Um, <clears throat> we do have a spec that uh, Daniel Bernier had started around SRV6 for remote mechanisms. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, that's probably a good one to go and comment on um, because I, I think... I. I I can't begin to explain to the folks who are not networking people how amazing segment routing v6 is. <laughs> if you have IPv6, you should be using segment routing v6. It's a bomb. Um, that said, it's just one of many things that network service mesh will support. Um, other specs that are sort of in process, there's a spec that started up about sessions payload. Uh, so think of this this way. If I want to interpose like an Envoy pod, you want to make sure you get the right payload for that. And if you look at the existing payloads we've had, they've been things like Ethernet or IP, et cetera. And none of those are really quite the right payload for uh, scoop up all the TCP and UDP connections that are going out this interface and deliver them to a proxy port on a proxy. And so the, the sessions payload type was an attempt to semantically specify what that payload, what that kind of payload would look like. Because good semantics are super important and super helpful. Um, then we've got the spec that Nikolai has got underway for the NSM release process. Um, there's a spec that Frederick started for doing um, Envoy as a network service, which is part of what prompted the sessions payload type spec. Um, there's an ongoing conversation that uh, Matthew Rohan kicked off about metrics um, for monitoring cross connects and monitor connections. Um, this has been kind of super interesting, like where do we put them? What metrics can we collect? Um, how we might we use them? Um, and then we've got a bunch of things sort of that, that's out there and, and more or less in, in, in a good position, but being reviewed, like uh, readiness probes, um, which is currently being worked on. Uh, there's a really interesting one on creating a proxy NSM for doing create. For those of you who've seen the talks and seen us talk about the create verb, one of the things we came to, came to realize is we don't actually need a create verb in the network service uh, policy because you can do the create activity with a proxy NSM. So it was a really good example of the network service mesh architecture getting simpler and more powerful at the same time. Um, we've almost actually got complete implementation now on the mutating admission controller, which is super helpful, but it, it's good to go take a look at that. Um, and we've got some really interesting discussions happening around interdomain network service mesh, how we handle crossing different domains. Um, and then also sort of as a shoot out of that is an approach to having network service mesh deal with physical NICs, including SRIOV and physical networks. So particularly for folks just interested in NFE, these are gonna be super fascinating topics and under very active discussion. Uh, so at, we actually have the um, readiness probes and liveness probes uh, in kind of an more or less approved stage because these are being worked and we also the mutating admission controller, right? <laughs> I that's mean, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, so this is, this is goodness. Um, and, and so, the other, good. Hello. So, uh, one thing that we need to do then is if they're in approved and are actively being worked on, we should probably move them to the, uh, to Markdown and stick them in the repo. So that way that they're, uh, they're properly preserved. Yeah, I think that's a super good idea um, because uh, as we sort of pointed out, um, Google Docs are a great way for, to collaborate on this sort of thing. Um, they're great for things like meeting minutes that are kind of a running log, um, but they're, they're not a fantastic archival medium for specs. So yes, let's go ahead and get these things moved over into, at least into the issues, if not into the repo. Um, okay. We we can create a, a specs folder under docs and just, you know, 
Yep, that's probably a good plan. Awesome. Um, one other thing I don't want to be really clear about, like if, if folks have things they would like to try and figure out specking, um, the, due to the mechanics of GitHub, if you want to um, add a card to this, um, it requires a certain level of privilege that's not generally available. So if you want to go file an issue that says spec colon and something and start up a conversation about how we might do a thing, reach out to Nikolai or Frederick or myself. We'd be delighted to add you to the specs board um, to make sure that we can highlight this as we go by week to week. Cool, that's, I guess, probably all for specs unless folks have questions or there are things people would like to deep dive into on the specs. I guess that one thing that, that we haven't agreed uh, around specs is that when we declare them kind of approved, it, is there a kind of timeout or I don't know, some, some at least not really formal procedure to, to, to kind of say, okay, we all agree because there's no yeah, really, I, 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 really a definition of all, right? <laughs> yeah, no, the definition of all gets complicated. And I, I tend to, my, my general preference, quite frankly, is um, to operate by consensus in all circumstances in which that's a workable method of, of figuring things out. Um, so I, I think you actually probably had a really good, um, a really good heuristic there, which is when something sort of converged to the point where we've got the implementation coming in. We're really not talking at that point about debating the spec, we're talking about reviewing the code. Um, and it's possible that in reviewing the code, we discover that there's something about the spec that was suboptimal, that happens, right? Um, but, but that might be a good way to do it. And, and perhaps the thing we should probably do is, approved is a bit of a strong word. Um, how would folks feel about um, you know, changing the spec approved column to something like um, spec being implemented. Hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, what's, what's the criteria from something going from a review to being implemented? Someone, so even, someone writing code and pushing a PR. <laughs> even, <laughs> even implemented though, like, I, I think, I, I, like there's, we, we might have a spec that we that we create, but then no one in the no one's ready to take it on yet and may not be able to take it, let's say for like six months because we all have things just from a time perspective. You know, and then it ends up sitting in this queue for taking up space for all that time. So if we if, so if, if we end up uh, so that's the one risk with with like specs being implemented is it may actually be a bit mis, uh, misleading where we're actually implementing it yet. Uh, or maybe someone creates a spec, but we decided in the long run, well, we actually don't want to implement this thing. You know, so it's, but it was still valuable to have that information and that discussion somewhere, you know, so we can still show it off somewhere. So mm -hmm. that's what I was thinking that the, the end result of it would be marked down in the, in the, in the code but not a, not necessarily as implementation. And then we can close the issue and then we can open up an issue and say, someone please implement this. And we can annotate the, that spec as being unimplemented uh, or waiting for someone to implement. And so I, I think that might, that would give it a good uh, uh, balance. Okay, I mean, we, we, we could definitely sort out and refine that, definitely. Um, all right. Cool. Yeah, and I'm and I'm not a I'm not a hard sticker on it. If you know, it's whatever works for the community. That's the most important part. Yeah, so. clearly, 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 you, you, Nikolai, and I are ultra sticklers for process. Outcomes do matter at all. Process matters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You forgot. You forgot to check off box number forty-three. Uh, reject. <laughs> so, Ed. Um, I feel like you're going to regret throwing this out there, but you said maybe do a deep dive on one of the specs. Would you mind clicking on inner domain NSM since we have 14 minutes? Perfect. Um, I'm actually. I, I just wanted to interject with one quick comment about specs and implementation. I, I think that the absolute most critical thing is that they're in sync, not in the process itself. But you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, all of us who've written code realize that that sometimes you discover as you're going along that. What seemed like a super good idea when you were writing, writing down what you thought you were going to do turns out to be a terrible, terrible idea. Um, so there's, there's, there's back and forth there, definitely. 
But at the end of the day, what, what actually is in the repo and what we say is the specification of what should be in the repo, if we're going to go put that in the repo, those two should damn well match, right? So even if you have a spec and this is what we all thought we should do and you went and tried to do it, it's not quite that. You should go back and fix the spec that lands in the repo so it matches reality. Okay, cool. So you wanted to talk about interdomain domain NSM. And yes, and so real quick too, just so that I'm 100% clear, we are saying that a network service manager, network service mesh manager, um, everything underneath that is a quote unquote domain. And then the next higher level construct is what you've got right on the screen right now, which is the registry domain, correct? Yeah, so let me, let me kind of talk through it um, because it's, it's more of a, a recognition of things than anything else. So um, the, 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 the first recognition, and this is from the abstract architecture stuff, I, I talked about this in deep dive, is um, we, we have a network service registry, right? We have a place where network service endpoints register that they will provide services um, and so that, that they can, you know, something can go look those up. Um, and we're also, we keep the network service records and the network service manager records. That's basically a registry. We happen to do that in the Kubernetes API server right now with your Kubernetes cluster. Um, the way the architecture is built, it doesn't have to be that. It just happens to be a convenient way we're stashing, place for stashing the data. It has the nice benefit you can type Q control, get you know, network service and get something. Um, and so in the abstract, you, you do have a network service registry and you can sort of think of the network service registry domain for that network service registry as all the network services and endpoints and managers that are registered with it. Um, and, and right now for us, that's a single Kubernetes cluster in the way we've implemented things, but it doesn't have to be that. It's much more flexible conceptually than that. Um, and, and this is often what I mean when I talk about domain is the domain of stuff that is being managed by a particular registry. And, and please note a logical registry, HA, blah, 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 that is all stuff that happens. Um, so, and then you, you may have within that network service registry domain. So a particular network service registry that may have a bunch of different network service managers registered with it. Um, and those network service managers may then be managing each a bunch of clients, endpoints, and possibly a data plane. Um, and this is very much like what we have currently in the Kubernetes example, where we have a network service manager per node as a daemon set. And so each network service manager manages the endpoints, clients, and the network service mesh data plane on that particular node, but they all register with the same um, service registry, which is scoped to the cluster, um, which we're storing things in the Kubernetes API server. And this is a great focus for us for actually getting things done. It's a really important way of doing it, um, et cetera. And so then we get to the question of interdomain. And you can start thinking about this first as like, what if I have more than one cluster, right? Um, how do I actually get services from one cluster to another? Um, that sort of thing. And, and so we, we talk about this like, imagine that we have a Kubernetes cluster. Um, it has the traditional service registry as the API server. Every node has a network service manager, um, et cetera. And then I've got some other kind of domain um, with its own register, network service registry and its own network service managers managing their own clients and their own daemons. And this could be another cluster, another Kubernetes cluster. This other domain could be a physical network. This other domain could be a Vim that's running a bunch of VMs that are providing network services. Um, Can we touch on that real quick? Sure. The, the physical network or also like the concept of a VIM. So like, so I have this registry, right? And um, I'm just kind of curious, like, since right now it is somewhat coupled with like the Kubernetes API server, like how is the daemon getting put on all these nodes that would say be in a VMware or an OpenStack environment? Um, and then when you put it out there, what is preventing NSM from competing you know, or having state issues with, say, Neutron or NSX? No, so th this is like, a super good question. So I'll, I'll get to the first one, right? The first one is, it turns out when you look at network service mesh, um, what we have defined is a, G for in terms of the registry, is a gRPC API. Um, and let me go ahead and actually pull the gRPC API up uh, right now, because it's going to make it super easier to talk about. Um, so we have defined 
a gRPC API for registries. And that gRPC API for the registries basically has a network service registry that has a register NSE, let me make the font a little bigger, that has a register NSE call and a remove NSE call, right? And it has a find network service call for doing discovery. And this is, this is actually the way network service mesh interacts with things like the network service registry. So every network service manager, this is the API that it's talking to talk to its network service registry. Now, we have a tiny little container that exposes these APIs and then goes and stores the information and looks up the information in the Kubernetes API server. But that's a, literally, that container is probably 100 lines of Go code. Um, and so none of the network service manager itself is not actually talking to the Kubernetes API server. It's talking to these gRPC APIs to that little tiny container that's getting us to that. So if I wanted to have a different kind of registry, that was going to go run in my Vim for some reason, um, then all I have to do is expose these APIs correctly and I am a network service registry. So you have flexibility um, around how you choose to implement the registry for a Vim or for the physical network because the real contract is these gRPC APIs. Does that make sense so far? It does and so would say I hit these GRC, GRC no, sorry I can't talk. Um, gRPC APIs, and I make a request, you know, via the registry. Does at that point um, it make an API call to Neutron as opposed to trying to directly program the data plane and the NSEs itself, or like what does that interaction look like? Okay, so keep in mind when you're talking to the registry, all you're really saying to the registry is either, "Hey, I'm a network. I have a network service endpoint," or "Please remove sure. a network service endpoint," or you're saying, "Find me a network service." Right? Those are the conversations you have with the registry. So um, in that, your registry doesn't actually do anything but provide you with information or store information for you. So we have to walk a little further into the story to get to the point I think you're really curious about. So could you give me a real quick second and we'll, we'll get, when we get a little further down, we can revisit this uh -huh. question. So basically the, um, you know, basically, so if I've got a Kubernetes cluster or some other domain, um, and there's some other domain that I would like to get a network service from. The, the current proposal is to say, look, previously you might have asked for secure internet connectivity. Um, and if you want it from the example.com domain, ask for secure internet connectivity.example.com. Um, and then we will interpret the example.com portion as, oh wait, this comes from outside the domain of the recurrent request, right? So at that point, and, and I, I want to mention briefly that Nikolai's pointed out this doesn't have to be welded to DNS, and I agree with him, but we'll talk about it for DNS because it's easy. At that point, DNS has a marvelous mechanism called SRV records, um, and you could simply look up the SRV record for the network service registry, for example.com in DNS. You get back a port and a domain name. So now you know, as the network service manager in the first domain, you now you know how to find the network service registry in the second domain which means you can use the find network service gRPC call to ask that network service registry, hey man, I've been told I, someone wants secure internet connectivity, got example.com, you're, you're the registry for that, tell me about secure internet connectivity in your domain. You'll get back the necessary information with all the endpoints and the network service managers and the policy and whatnot that you can decide which network service endpoint you think you want. And you also know which network service manager in the other domain you should talk to if you want to set up a connection with them. And so in that case, you would use the same remote network service dot request that you use inside your domain for intra domain, you would use to talk to a network service manager from a different domain. And then effectively you end up negotiating the connection in exactly the same way you would for intra domain. Um, it just happens that the network service manager you're talking to is not in your domain, it's somewhere else. And then, the building out of the tunnel is also very much the same. The network service manager in the other domain will you know, plumb an interface into the network service endpoint that he manages, set up his end of the tunnel. The network service manager in your domain does the same thing. And, and so effectively, other than this one step where you realize, oh, we're going to a different domain, I have to find the service registry for that domain. Other than that step, 
the steps are pretty much the same as if you were in, in dealing in the same domain. Does that make sense? And so what you're getting to your question that you asked Jeffrey about the, um, the network service manager for a VIM, um, the network service manager for a VIM would simply be a set of code that's specific to that VIM that if someone came in and said, I would like to be connected to a network service named Neutron Network 63 or whatever, um, would know how to arrange for a tunnel that would connect you to that Neutron Network. Does that make sense? It does. This, this is definitely something I would like to um, dive deeper into with you for sure too, because I think in the near term, what you're going to see providers like my company do is we've mm -hmm. already got a bunch of open stack out there. We've got a bunch of VMware out there. We're running virtual firewalls. We're running virtual whatever, but maybe all of my web app developers on the back end for like, you know, video experience X is all built in containers. So having like our server farms hosting everything in Kubernetes, being able to then create that bottom purple bar you've got there into the OpenStack world as that VPN gateway or as that firewall before it goes out to the great blue yonder, I think will be important. And oh, yeah. I still, I, it's kind of like nebulous. Like when you say like run some code, you know, like, I mean, am I deploying a container inside of every single OpenStack node? Am I just putting it in one place and acting as an API shim to call Neutron on my behalf based on what like the network service I described further north is? Like those things are still kind of giving me yeah, so brain crinkles. So I'm, I'm going to actively mm -hmm. start looking at, uh, at OpenStack integration uh, as, a, as an example of being connected from Kubernetes through OpenStack, through VNFs, and then back again. So, because it's, it's something that I want to try to demo out. So perhaps what I can do is come up with a spec like we have there and then we can go over it. And you can help that would be great. Yeah, I, I do apologize. I have got to run to another call really quickly here, but this is a super interesting conversation. I definitely want to continue. Um, so I will yeah, we, talk we don't need a rabbit hole. I, I'm just curious. Like I, you, you gave oh, me no, the no, opportunity to say we could deep dive on a spec, so I was greedy. No, no, no. It's a super good topic. I'm glad we had the discussion. I just have to run to another meeting. Talk to you later. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, Fred, yeah, this would definitely be interesting to uh, be put in a spec where we can collaborate and discuss about all these things because at least up till now the specs seem to be the, 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 the best way to exchange the information there and then uh, everyone can, you know, just uh, uh, process it uh, through his own lens and uh, express his opinion. Okay, uh, I guess that, that, that we should wrap up the call with this. Uh, we are on top of the on top of the hour already, so if uh, if we don't have anything else uh, to to discuss, I guess we can close. Nope. See you the same time tomorrow, Nikolai, for the yeah. uh, document call. Of course. Awesome. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye, guys. See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.